Hi, I'm Hafiz again, and I'm going to take you through to this area of the exam syllabus, which is the fixed and flexed budgets. Let's have a look at how the fixed and flexed budgets work. If you remember from the previous session, which was about budgeting types, we had seen a number of budgeting types traditional and alternative and in the traditional approach there was one budgeting type which was periodic or fixed budgets meaning to say is fixed budgets are set for a period of time generally one year and another characteristic is fixed budgets are set for one or single level of activity meaning to say right at the beginning of the year if we have a periodic or fixed budget, fixed budgets are set for one or single level of activity, meaning sales department will give us the sales plans, how many units they will sell, and those units will never change for the whole year. That will remain a consistent plan for the whole year without any change, update, or revision. If the production department gives us their production budget, how many units will be produced over the next year that production activity remains constant throughout the year that's the meaning of fixed budget for a single level of activity now the idea is if the fixed budgets are produced for a single level of activity are we not assuming that there will be no change or fluctuation during the year so the first problem as I was defining the fixed budgets, you might have noticed that the problem is that no, things change. As the economy moves up or down, society moves up or down, ec economic or social factors change, government rules or laws change, things change. So it may not be viable that if we set budget for one level of activity and throughout the year we consider this one level of activity will not change it may change okay right also uh, another problem in the fixed budgets is that when we receive the actual results at the end of the year we compare the budgeted results with the actual results and we get a variance a number of times the managers do not accept or appreciate this variance let me give you one example why the fixed budgets do not help us in variance analysis okay just imagine that at the beginning of the year we had fixed budget to produce 100 units to spend $1,000 meaning we planned we budgeted we will produce 100 units and the cost of 100 units will be $1,000 at the end of the year we received actual results okay at the end of the period we received actual results as per actual results we produced 150 units And by producing 150 actual units, we have spent $1,400. Now, the traditional fixed analysis works in this way in a number of organizations, mostly public sector organizations, as well as some private sector organizations as well. When we compare our original budgeted results with the actual results in this way that budget was to spend one thousand dollars we actually spent fourteen hundred dollars and the variance is four hundred dollars adverse meaning there is an overspending of four hundred dollars in this period because we planned or budgeted to spend only a thousand dollars 
and actual incurrence was $1,400. So a number of people may interpret the results in this way that we have spent $400 more than the budget, which we shouldn't have. Okay. Now, did you notice a number of people may start smiling on this comparison? That it's not very much justified. Remember, almost in every session I men mention that in general management accounting or actually in finance or accountancy, the most acceptable and logical comparison are, comparisons are when we compare like with like. Okay, comparing apples with pears is not a comparison. Okay, comparison is when we are comparing two similar identical things. So, as per fixed budget, a number of people may say, well, hang on a moment. Original budget of $1,000 was set for 100 units. And if we have made more units, we ought to spend more money. Okay? If we produce more units, we will spend more money. And if we produce less units, chances are we will spend less money. Okay? Then why this $400 is adverse, meaning to say, should we only produce 100 units? What if the demand is 150 units? Should we still produce 100 units because it's fixed budget? And number of people said, no, 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 that's not logical. If we get more customers, we should produce more and we should sell more and we should generate more revenue. So producing more and selling more is not bad thing. But fixed budget analysis is telling it is something bad we have done. On the basis of this problem, what we do is we apply the principle of flexed budget analysis. Okay, we apply the idea of flexed budget analysis, which we are going to look at in a moment. Okay, we are going to look at a moment. Another characteristic of fixed budget is when actual volume of production and sales during the control period are achieved, a fixed budget is not adjusted to the new level of activity, meaning we simply compare original budgeted results with the actual results without any adjustment. Okay, uh, it has some usefulness. That's why a number of companies actually stick to fixed budgets, a number of organizations. Okay, it's likely to be useful in circumstances where the organizational environment is rel relatively stable, meaning to say what they have planned they know for some reason because of the past consistency, past trends, that more or less the same will happen in future. And then if the results can be predicted to some degree of certainty, then fixed budgets can be very much okay. So when there is a consistency that at the start of the year we knew we will produce 500 cars, and at the end of the year, we had produced 500 cars, then fixed budgets are very useful. But if we budgeted, we will sell 500 units, and at the end of the year, we had sold only 300 units, then the fixed budget may not work. So when level of activities, actual level of activities remain inconsistent with the budgeted level of activities, then fixed budgets work quite well. Periodic budgets work quite well. But if there are any fluctuations in certain industries or certain businesses or organizations, then fixed analysis doesn't work or it doesn't help that much. In order to address this issue, we look into the flexed budgets, okay, or flexible budgets. Flexible budgets are budgets set at different level of activities that what if we produce more than original planned results or what if we produce less than original or planned results just to see what happens if we if we produce more or sell more uh, idea of the flexed budgets okay fix flexible here i mean to say is flexed budgets idea of the flexed budgets is not to plan. Flexed budgets are not used for planning purposes. Flexed budgets are used for control and performance evaluation purposes. Flexed budgets are not produced at the beginning of the year. Flexed budgets are produced at the end of the year. Let me repeat. 
normally we produce budgets at the beginning of the year, right? When the new year is almost going to start, then we have the budgets. But flexed budgets are not produced at the beginning of the year because they are not used for planning purposes. Flexed budgets are used for control or performance evaluation purposes. With the help of flexed budgets, we ascertain useful differences or variances. And what we believe is variances are more fair, variances are more realistic, and variances are more acceptable to managers if we apply flexed budgets rather than fixed budgets. Okay? Now, idea of the flexed budget is this. Before you look at the steps, let me show you how flexed budgets will work. If I go back to the previous example, okay? So as per original budget, plan was to produce 100 units and to spend $1,000. Now, can we say 100 units budget and $1,000 budget? As per budget, can we say plan was to spend $10 per unit? 100 units times by $10 equals to $1,000, meaning all I done was $1,000 divided by 100 units. Okay, if I spread $1,000 over 100 units, I get budgeted cost per unit, which is $10. Okay, and what if we produced 150 units? Can I say if the cost is $10 per unit for 150 units? units it would or it should have cost us 1500 okay so if budget for a hundred units is one thousand dollars budget for 150 units should be fifteen hundred dollars okay let me repeat if the budget for 100 units is set at one thousand dollars the budget for 150 units should be set at $1,500. So, isn't it now comparison of like with like? That we are comparing for 150 units, budgeted cost will be $1,500 and actual cost was $1,400 for the same 150 units. And now this variance becomes more meaningful to the managers or acceptable to the managers that we are comparing that budget to produce 150 units was 1500 and actual spending for 150 units was 1400 so there is actually a saving of 100 dollars not overspending we spent 100 dollars less than the original budget okay this 1500 dollars is called as flexed budget so flexed budget is actually i can define it here before we look at these steps, specific steps. Flexed budget is a revised budget prepared at the end of the year taking into account actual level of activity, meaning to say actual level of units, actual machine hours, actual labor hours. So <clears throat> flexed budget is a revised original budget or a revised fixed budget, if you fancy. It's a revised fixed budget prepared at the end of the year, taking into account actual level of activity. And the aim of flexed budget is to compare flexed budget with the actual results to get any difference which becomes meaningful variance, acceptable variance, realistic variance, a like with like variance. Okay, let's have a look at some steps in flexed budgets. A fixed budget is set at the beginning of the year. 
okay based upon estimated production this is the original budget this is then flexed <clears throat> this original budget is then flexed to correspond with actual level of activity okay variable costs and sales revenues are adjusted to reflect actual level of activity reason being variable costs and sales revenue are fluctuating elements meaning to say more volume more costs and revenue less volume less costs and revenue okay so variable costs and sales revenue is flexed in light of the actual activity okay and that the result is compared with the actual cost or actual revenue and the difference is called as a variance and then the management can take proper control action if somebody has done a good job as compared to the budget we can appreciate them reward them and then we can request them to move forward in the same way or even better and if somebody has not done a very good job we can sit down together and see how things can be improved how the last errors or mistakes or poor planning cannot be repeated again okay <clears throat> a number of times the costs are given in a very clear way that this is variable cost this is fixed cost okay now please remember that fixed cost will not be flexed okay why do we need to know about the variable and fixed cost because what we believe is fixed cost remains constant regardless of the volume of activity generally okay so up to a range fixed cost remains constant so if we produce 100 units or we produce 90 units or we produce 150 units fixed cost commitments remain the same so idea is we only flex variable cost we do not flex fixed cost but in an exam question if for example you are given a semi variable cost because you have studied paper F2 so of course this was part of paper F2 that I will revise again if we are given semi variable cost which includes like different type of bills mobile phone bills telephone bills electricity heating lighting etc where one part of the bill is fixed line rental and the second part of the bill is variable based upon variable consumption okay so if we are given a semi variable cost then we can apply high low method which helps us to separate semi variable cost into variable and fixed okay we are going to look into this later on now here are here is the example but few points actually I like to take into your notice okay number one remember we only flex variable costs and revenue variable costs and revenues are flexed only because they depend upon level of activity fixed costs are not flexed meaning to say whatever the fixed cost is in the fixed budget we simply copy and paste the same fixed cost in the flexed budget okay we do not change it okay whenever there is a semi variable cost we apply high low method okay and high low method splits the semi variable cost into variable and fixed and now variable is flexed and fixed is not flexed okay so this is the basic understanding of the flexed budget so here is an example Strauss limited let's have a look at the information and the requirements and then we are going to solve it you have been provided with the following operating statement which represents an attempt to compare the actual performance for the quarter that has just ended with the budget so their aim is to compare actual performance with the budget they given us three columns one is budget second is actual 
and the difference between budget and actual budget minus actual equals to a variance somewhere you can see in this variance column numbers are positive somewhere you can see numbers are negative plus and minus within the brackets are negative okay positive simply reflect favorable results and negative simply represent adverse or unfavorable results so let's have a look at this statement first number of units sold okay we are provided that budget was to produce and sell 640 units or there are three zeros as well so 640,000 whereas actually they produced 720 or 720,000 units so they produced 80,000 units more now do you think if they would produce 80,000 more units they would spend more money and if they would sell 80,000 more units they will generate more revenue as well so comparing the cost of 640 units with 720 units is not a comparison of like with like it is like comparing two completely different things and managers will say how come you are comparing the cost of 640 units with 720 units 640 units will cost us differently and 720 units will cost us differently of course right comparison is in one of the two ways either we should compare budgeted cost of 640 units with actual cost of 640 units or the one we are going to do now would be the flexed budget idea in which we will compare the budgeted cost of 720 units with actual cost of 720 units to see how much we should have spent for 720 units and how much we did spend for 720 units and the difference would become more meaningful and acceptable to the managers okay so the original operating statement may not be very meaningful they given us cost of sales and they told us they are all variable why variable because we flex variable only then we are given fixed labor cost and please remember we do not flex fixed costs selling and distribution variable and fixed administration variable and fixed we only flex variable do not flex the fixed then we are provided sales and of course sales revenues depend on the number of units so sales will be flexed requirement a using a flexible budgeting approach redraft the operating statement so as to provide a more realistic indication of the variances and comment briefly on the possible reasons other than inflation why they have occurred okay this is requirement a let's have a look at the requirement a first then we will look at b and c separately okay they asked us to prepare the new statement based upon flexed budgeting idea so what i will do would be okay just to save little time and give you better view i would insert one column in between budget and actual and that will be called as flexed flexed budget okay right that's called as flexed budget right let's start developing flexed budget first of all let's have a look at the cost of sales first is materials as per original budget material cost is hundred and sixty eight thousand dollars and as per budget number of units are 640 so what we do is exactly the same idea as I had applied in my Mickey Mouse example before remember what I did was here that as per budget thousand dollars divided by hundred units that gave me ten dollars per unit and ten dollars per unit multiplied by actual activity equals to the flexed budget exactly the same principle I'm going to adopt here as well that as per budget material cost is 168 I'm ignoring three zeros divided by 640 units that gives me material cost per unit as per budget okay and then I would multiply that material cost per unit by the actual activity 720 units 
and I will simply get flexed budgeted cost of materials. So here is my little calculator 168 over 640 times by 720 which gives me 189. one hundred and eighty nine and this becomes the flexed budget okay so let's do the flexing and then we will work out the variances labor exactly the same principle two hundred and forty as per budget which is that divided by six hundred and forty which is budgeted volume multiplied by the actual volume which is seven hundred and twenty and here is the flexed cost 240 divided by 640 times 720 which is 270 270 now this is the flexed budget for labor cost okay now the next one I'm looking at is overheads which is exactly the same principle because these are variable so I need to apply the same flexing step 32,000 divided by 640,000 times by 720,000 which comes to 36 okay let's have a look at the next one fixed labor cost Remember, fixed costs are not flexed. So this 100 will be copied and pasted as it is. We will not change anything because we know whether we produce more or less. Generally, fixed costs remain the same. Selling and distribution. First is the fixed and fixed will be copied and pa pasted in the flexed budget. Okay. Variable will be flexed exactly on the same lines. 144 divided by 640 times by 720 and that gives us the variable selling and distribution flexed cost. One six two. Then administration costs fixed do not get flexed 184 and variable will be flexed so 48 as per budget divided by 640 as per budget so that gives us variable administration cost per unit as per budget multiplied by 720 actual units this gives us flexed or revised budgeted cost for 720 units okay so 48 over 640 times by 720 which is 54 and last one is sales so we know we flex the sales exactly on the same lines 1024 as per budget divided by 640 units as per budget and multiplied by 720 units as per actual results and we will get the flexed revenue or flexed sales which is 1152 okay so this is all the flexing idea so you might have noticed a very straightforward topic so generally comes once in two years three years time okay so whenever it comes it's a good topic to gain marks now what we are supposed to do is to calculate variances so some variances we may have to change for example please look at more realistic variance is the difference between flexed budget and actual results why it is more realistic i will show you now actual results were based upon 720 units and now flexed budget is also based upon 720 units okay meaning 
how much money we should have spent to produce 720 units and how much money we did spend to produce 720 units, the difference becomes more realistic, more meaningful. So 189 minus 144, we get 45. And being positive, we can see it is favorable simply because we spent less than the budget. Now previously, it was 24. So uh, maybe this purchasing manager or production manager can argue that before in the original statement, my performance was being underestimated. I have saved a lot more money, but I was underestimated in terms of my policies. And probably somebody may not be upset. Somebody may take things at their heart, okay, that I'm not being fairly appreciated by the top management, okay? So this 24 will not be meaningful. Labor, 270 minus 288, the difference is 18 and that is adverse. F for favorable and A is adverse or unfavorable. Now again the same principle, any managers responsible for the labor cost, they were criticized before that they have overspent $48,000. But in reality, overspending was not $48,000, it was only $18,000. Okay, and somebody can say that because we have produced 80,000 more units than the budget, so in a number of cases when our job or activities increase, we end up doing some overtime as well. So it could be a possibility that some of the jobs or some of the units were produced in the late evenings or weekends when we were supposed to pay the workers more than the normal rate. And in a number of companies, overtime policies work. So that could be one of the reasons that we overspend. Not necessarily it could be a fault or mistake of the HR manager or production manager, but because whenever we expand and we produce more than the plan, things happen. In the variable overheads, there is no variance actually. Whenever the answer is zero, we believe it is favorable, meaning as per, but we spent as per budget. We never spent more, never spent less, we spent as per budget, so it's fine. But before it was showing adverse. So some manager who was responsible for the overhead cost may be demotivated because of the previous report. So original operating statement was probably unacceptable, demotivational, and it may not help us for better plans in the future. This is how you can develop the variances. So I have completed the requirement A as well as I explained the requirement B, why the original operating statement was of little use. Remember I was saying it may lead to demotivation, it may upset the managers, managers may not like to con continue with the organization, managers may change their work or their policies and changing the policies may not be very good for the company. I mean to say my point is this, if I believe if I believe I am doing justice to my job, I am doing all my best, I am using, I am using all my energies and hard work in the best interest of the company. And the management says, you are lazy, you are not working that hard, okay? Then I may change my policy. A number of people do nothing and look busy sort of things. Okay, if I change because of non-appreciation, then changing myself, how would I change? That if my hard work is not being rewarded, it's better not being rewarded by a lazy work. So a number of people, because we are humans, okay, and a number of thoughts surround us, okay? So a number of people may change their tactics and changing the tactics may not be very good for the company. They may be, but a number of chances they may not, may not be good for the company. Here is requirement C, which would be the application of high-low method. So we will learn high-low method here as well. Okay, further analysis has indicated that variable overheads for cost of sales 
are in fact only semi variable so up above we were given variable overheads before but now they are saying they are not variable they are semi variable whilst the budgeted overheads for 640000 units is indicated to be 32000 units sorry 32000 dollars it is felt that budget for 760000 units would be 37000 dollars Included in this later cost, later means $37,000, is $1,000 incurred when the activity reached 750,000 units due to extra hiring capacity. Now, here is the high-low method. In the high-low method, first of all, the step one is, okay, this is the requirement C, application of high-low method. Whenever two or more activities are given, whenever two or more activities are given, we apply high-low method to split semi-variable cost into variable and fixed. Remember, number one, we pick highest and lowest activities from the data provided. For example, the highest activity here is 760,000 units and the lowest activity is 640,000 units. And we are given the cost of the highest and lowest activities as well, and $32,000, okay? And now examiner is saying, in this $37,000, there is a cost of $1,000, which was included because of the increase in level of activity. So when level of activity reaches 750,000 units, then there is an extra $1,000 incurred. And if you remember F2, Okay, or if you don't remember F2, please remember now that whenever the fixed cost increases, once the level of activity reaches at a certain stage and fixed cost goes up, that cost is called as step or step up cost. Stepped or step up cost. Okay, now please remember, always we compare like with like in any topic, in any area of the syllabus. Is it like and like comparison between highest and lowest? I mean to say, do we have step up cost in the highest? You would say yes, because activity is more than 750,000 units. Is there any step up cost in the lowest activity? And I think you will say no, because activity is below 750,000 units. So it's not a like with like comparison. In one level of activity, there is a step up factor. In another level of activity, there is no step up factor. So whenever such happens, in order to make a comparison of like with like, we remove this step up. There are two ways, either we can subtract 1000 here from the highest or some people do it in this way let's add 1000 there so that there is step up in both of them so either there is no step up in either of them or there is a step up in both of them so one of the two approaches you can apply okay not both of them just one either subtract this step up wherever it is included or add this step up wherever it is not included. One of the two, okay? This is step number one. Now, step number two is we take the difference, okay? These are all 10 second steps. 10 seconds mean picking up highest and lowest is like 10, 15 seconds. Taking the difference is you can count the seconds. It will simply be 120,000 units difference in units and 36. Now this becomes 36. 
Okay, so 36 minus 32 is $4,000. So these are all 10 to 15 second, 20 second steps. Okay, it takes time to explain, but it doesn't take time to apply. Number three, once we found the difference in cost and difference in units, then we can, we can calculate variable cost per unit, which will be the difference in cost, $4,000, divided by difference in units, 120000 Meaning, when 120,000 more units were produced, 4,000 more dollars were incurred. And we can find out at what rate the cost was changing. So, 4,000 divided by 120,000. And we get approximately 0 0.03, okay, or 0.33. If you fancy per unit once we calculate the variable cost then the next step is find out fixed cost now fixed cost is simply difference between total cost and variable cost okay in order to find out fixed cost we substitute variable cost into either highest data or lowest data. Let me use the lowest data in this example and while I'm doing the calculation of fixed cost, you can do the same step with highest level, okay? And you would notice my answer and your answer for the fixed cost will be exactly the same because fixed cost doesn't change, okay? So here is total cost at the lowest activity was $32,000. And variable cost is 0.033 multiplied by 640,000 units. Okay, so 0 0.033 times 640,000 that comes to this and if I take away from the total cost I get fixed cost of 10,880. If you have got slightly different it's not because of the answers is answers are wrong it's because it depends on how many digits or decimals you have applied in rounding off if you have rounded off to two decimals 0 0.03 your answer may be slightly different okay but not to worry about this because it is rounding off or decimal discrepancy it's not conceptual discrepancy examiners are more than happy to see this answer okay once we calculated the fixed cost now we know we split the semi variable into variable and fixed okay now let's the last part of the requirement see produce a revised flexed budget for overheads contained in the cost of sales for an activity level of 720,000 units so we are working out revised flexed budget okay so here is revised flexed budget for 720,000 units okay first of all flexed variable cost Remember variable cost was 0 0.033 per unit multiplied by 720,000 units and here we will get revised flexed variable cost for 720,000 units. Now here is flexed fixed cost and we will do it here. And then we will look into step up cost as well or stepped cost. Okay, so first of all, variable cost. So 0 0.033 into 720,000, that comes to 23,760. 
23,760. Now I'm looking at flexed fixed cost. Fixed cost as per my answer was 10,880. Okay. Now, do you think fixed cost changes or do we flex the fixed cost? Yes, we do not flex the fixed cost. I agree with your answer. So 10,880 will just be copied and pasted as it is. 10,880. Now we are looking at the stepped cost. Let me go back to the question and read one more line again for your understanding. Please look at here. Included in this later cost is $1,000 incurred when the activity reached 750,000 units due to extra hiring capacity. Right? And we are preparing the flexed budget for 720,000 units meaning there is no need of stepped cost because the activity hasn't reached 750,000 units in this budget, okay? Once we will be producing budget for 750 or above, then there will be a step up cost of $1,000. But in this case, we do not need that. So plus 10,880, our revised flexed cost budget will be 34,640. That comes to our revised flexed cost budget. Okay, so I'm sure you must have enjoyed this session because it was very straightforward area of the syllabus flexing the budget. Okay, so I hope you would remind yourself with some uh, study text readings, uh, session notes, and then watching my video maybe another time again so that you know when we revise things more we reinforce our learning and you know how to come back to us okay mail my tutor so please come back to us with your feedback any questions any concerns okay and we will keep in touch so all the very best take care goodbye